Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, everybody. This is Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Uh, To my right, I have Kurt Dukach, Raymond Fletcher, and William Beach Baker. Uh, We'll get started right with the news and... Uh, you have the news that Clark County has approved for 18 dispensaries, Kurt? Yeah, that's right. On uh, Friday, they uh, decided on the 18 applicants that they intend on uh, okaying with the state. And part of those 18 uh, applicants, it started out with pitches from 14 applicants uh, with proposed businesses in the Spring Valley area. And over the three days, it, people got voted uh, to either two, three, four or five votes, um, whether they went on to the next round. So round after round of elimination happened and it came down to the 18 applicants um, uh, that were approved were in your fine uh, cannabis Dispensary, CWN Nevada, Just Quality, The Medmen of Nevada, GB Sciences Nevada, The Clinic Nevada, uh, LVMC LLC, Nevada Medical Can- uh, Marijuana Dispensary, Clear River, Desert Inn Enterprises, Inc., Nevada Holistic Medicine LLC, Integral Associates LLC, TGIG LLC, Global Harmony, uh, Gravatas Nevada um, Limited, and Euphoria Wellness, uh, Fidelis Holdings and Nevada Organic Remedies. So, those were the 18 that were approved, and there were many, many people eliminated. <coughs> After each applicant, uh, Mr. Raymond Fletcher got up and, and spoke, I guess, for the first 10 applicants, and then after everybody um, finished and and the applicants were announced Raymond got up again and, and spoke at the Clark County meeting what do you have to say Raymond what what was the gist of your of your um, message to the Clark County basically the message was the process I was not objecting to them going through the applications because that's their purview you know in their position that they have as the Clark County commissioners however their process was never laid out they changed it from the get-go and once you lay out a process especially for something as huge as this you need to follow the guidelines that you yourself set out okay and so and your objection was um basically what we've kind of been talking about for for a while is that let's see there were (laughs) do-overs the 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 process itself you know the whole the whole process now if they were following the state's guidelines for how the state was going to score them, mm-hmm. they would not have voted by township or had several rounds of voting like that. They wouldn't have. Not only that, uh, Chairman Steve Sislak said at the Board of County Commissioners meeting the previous day, if you don't have it turned in by noon, we're not going to accept it. Yet applicant after applicant after applicant after applicant still kept turning something in. And right then and there, they should have either rejected, ripped up what they were turning in at that point, or rejected the applicant on the basis of not having your stuff turned in. Okay, so so you um, you were objecting to the fact that that there were timelines that were not met that there were applicants that got uh, f- uh, favoritism and, and preferential treatment uh, because they got do-overs and just that, and, and that's it. Because I, I would have a couple of more protests myself. Uh, the the thing that I would be protesting is that Clark County um, 
we're supposed to get what ten allotted. That was another thing I was and, protesting. The and process. then, and then, at, and at the last minute, they they said, "Well, we have the number of people in Clark County, so that we get to grant eighteen applications." But part of the state and the legislative process said at the end that if you want more than your allotted amount which was 10 then you need to apply to the state and get state approval which was not done what they basically did was they took applications from communities that said that they were not going to open up dispensaries in clark county but who may have reversed their positions like they took some from north las vegas they also gave two additional ones to the city of las vegas so how is that gonna work out at the end of the day and, and on whose authority and, and who in the he double hockey sticks are they to usurp the state's authority i'm not i'm not sure but i've been told that you know that the clark county commissioners are some of the seven most powerful people in nevada but you know i don't know well, after they after they chose their eighteen, they also I was watching the meeting. They held the other ones off to the side in the hopes that some of these other municipalities won't use up all of theirs, and they think that they're going to take even more at that point. Okay, all right. So, if they're taking, if they would take even more at that point, or some of the other municipalities don't take theirs, Chris G. Like in the last round, she was she was suggesting that maybe that twenty four was sent up to the state, or that or that um, <laughs> or that more were sent up to to the state. And the other thing that um, Bruce Gale got up in, and and spoke about, um, can you can you shed some light on that? Um, Bruce Gale got up and spoke. Uh, he tried to speak af- after I did, you know, after the last applicant. Because you remember, I spoke after the last applicant and then after they voted on this whole three-some-odd-hour vote that they did. But Bruce got up and he objected to the process as well. You know, and it- it's important that people... Well, you know, what his suggestion was was actually a really smart suggestion that the the remainder of the applicants, not the 18 chosen, but the remainder of the applicants get a certificate from Clark County saying that they did qualify um, for the special use. Per, or, or actually for the they met all of the qualifications and they qualified for the the zoning and the special use permit and everything else because if you recall they had to have all of these factors in place and then go before Clark County so all of those other people were already vetted their land use was already vetted the zoning was already vetted and so what Bruce was asking for was just like some type of certificate saying, yeah, these, these people did make it through all of that process. And then he encouraged everybody uh, that did not get uh, their application chosen to submit their application to the state anyway. As, as did I as well. But here's the thing. Some of those, because there were 81 initially and two withdrew, mm-hmm. so it only became 79. And of the 61 not chosen, am I math correct? 60, I don't know. I've been up since four. Oh, yeah. Election day. Don't forget. Go vote. Okay. Um, you know, those those that didn't get selected, why, were there merits that they weren't selected on? Because there were a number of them that didn't get a single vote in the first round. So, I mean, you need to look at that, too. There were some that... With all due respect to the applicants, I've worked in public schools. I've seen second graders do better presentations than some of the people that went up there. So those aren't people that I'd be willing to give a certificate to. But you're talking about sending them up, Jen, and I'm laughing, and I don't mean it out of disrespect. But as we know, we we talked about the Marla McDade-Williams interview, and... um, the county isn't sending anything up. The applicants are. Well, that's the truth. So the applicants should just to send them up anyway. I mean, the, the 18 and, and plus the remainder. They uh, all just, just to need to apply. Them, just apply and send it and send it up to the state. Because if the state doesn't select the 18 that Clark County said, you know, then, then what's the deal? What's going to happen when the state only selects 10 for Clark County? Because Clark County didn't go to the state and get approval to get those extra eight. 
what position is that going to put our county in? Well, oh, that in in a, well in a good way, I guess. Then they'll ha- they state will have more to select from because they've sent up eighteen and they're only going to select ten. Maybe? They haven't. Everybody keeps saying they sent up. The they, county is not sending a single darn thing. The applicants themselves need to apply to the state. And here's the funny thing: what I haven't heard anybody talking about. After we've gone through our zoning, after we've gone to the state process, now we have to go to business licensing. Even though your business plan was included, you still have to go to business licensing after all of this. Cha-ching, cha-ching. How much money are you spending? Me, myself? Nothing. No, no, I'm just saying saying that that this this is a... And this is this isn't this is just the first round. Most most of these people who put in uh, uh, applications for dispensaries also have applications out there pending for production and manufacturing, which uh, the county is going to be holding in two weeks. Eighteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth. Yeah. So what happens uh, if you don't get your your production and you're not allowed to grow for your own dispensary? I mean, are you going to be one of those uh, one of those production people? That are salty that your dispensary didn't get chosen and jack up the prices for that person that got chosen over you? Hmm. hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. And, you know, because Clark County, you can't uh, you can't bring any cannabis into Clark County for their dispensaries. It has to be grown here as per their regulations. Then um, <laughs> well, <laughs> Beach says he's got 12 plants for sale. <laughs> I, I I join him. I got my twelve plants. If you're looking to start your dispensary, uh, I, I'm I I've never sold, so you know I'm just a grow your own kind of girl. Yeah. I have my special strains. I, I plan on keeping mine. <laughs> you know because I don't make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. I know you guys are thinking I'm sporting some whip like some BMW, you know, and riding down the road. I'm on the radio, but no, no, I don't make enough money to. Um, to purchase my meds in a dispensary. Yeah, I don't think uh, anybody's going to be, and it's going to, you know, the price is going to be jacked up from from the from jump, you know, and so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens, you know, once we finally get the process moving. But that's on the county level. Okay, so let's talk about city city. On the city, the regulations, the majority of the amendments, and everything, your medical marijuana. Regulations for the city of Las Vegas are now in place. And guess what? Legalize it. I get to advertise it. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the big sticking points in the city was the fact that they were trying to restrict so much of the advertising that could be done to let people know where you're at and what you know what kind of business you have. Yeah, I had dreams of that hoochie gone off that billboard that drives up and down Las Vegas Boulevard and see like a huge, huge, huge plant. Hold up. You seen some of those people we saw out during First Friday, how they were dressed, advertising their goodies, we'll call it. You seen that? If that can happen out on First Friday where all them little children were running around (laughs) and can see that, I don't want my child seeing that. But, you know, to see something like that, businesses should be able to advertise their medication so that patients know where to go and you know the thing is the funny thing is it was like it was restricted all the way down to like you know just a web syndicate and um some type of i think like youtube videos or something well, strange anything that anything was how restrictive was it was anything online was acceptable and i'm like you know what the crowd over over 60 years old are really not online devotees you know that's that's more that's more of a younger crowd i'm not i'm not being ageist but i'm just saying the the skill set from or, or of a lot of that generation is really doesn't you know not smart so phone savvy well what got me was the restrictions on television advertising that, that you know, i can't turn on the tv without seeing advertisements for prescription medications and then i mean marijuana is all over tv already i mean it's on the news it's everywhere you can't turn it on without seeing something about what's going on in the in the cannabis movement i mean what difference is that compared to a commercial for a professional dispensary. 
probably because you're not keeping it up like Viagra or Cialis. But I'm just, you know, <laughs> those are the kind of commercials we know, have. But, you, but you, you know, can't you can't turn on without the news leaders anymore. Everything's, you know, what's going on in the cannabis movement, you know, and and they're they're not even using the you know the professional terms like we will. They're you know they're talking you know the you know gone to pot and you know the green rush and this and that, and that's already on television. So what is it going to hurt if somebody wants to advertise their business in a professional manner? Well, you know, that's just it. I mean, I've, I, I, my pointed out that we're on AM radio and it's talk radio and our, our age group is definitely over 30. So it's not like, you know, some tiny tot's going to say, what's on talk radio today? Let's flip that on. Oh, I'm hearing about pot and cannabis and blah, 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 you know, and get any ideas from it. You know, that's more for like, remember that KOMP commercial? Uh, for, oh, what was that? What was that smoke shop? Mr. Bills. Yeah. Yeah, it was on. Yeah, it was some kind of jingle for Mr. Bills. Um, and and it sounded really like, like a little kid's jingle. And I'm like, well, wait a second. They're advertising tobacco. But, you know, I digress. And I don't want to bash anybody's commercials. Well, they weren't advertising tobacco. They were advertising tobacco smoking utensils. Oh, okay. Well, I'm 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 advertising dab smoking utensils. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So um, so city passed a lot of the regulations, um, and so you'll be able to advertise on this radio show if you've got a dispensary. <laughs> Thanks for that plug, Kurt. <laughs> uh, more in local news. It is election day today. This is the primary. Um, you can go and vote now. Up until, until 7, 7 p.m. So you can vote from now until 7 p.m. And you have to vote at your what local polling place, right? Your local yes. polling place. I'm pretty sure uh, contact Clark County. Uh, they'll be able to tell you where to vote if you don't know. Your local school, more than likely in your neighborhood is uh who the majority of folks now it's your prime now election day is primary election day which means you have to declare a party you know are you democrat are you uh republican or are you independent oh. you have to pull a specific ballot and then november in the general you have the opportunity to vote for either party I, w I want them to have a cannabis party not a green party the cannabis party maybe we should start one <laughs> there you go, start your own political party. But if you don't get out and vote, and this is my little two cents on it. Okay. If you don't get out and vote, I don't want to hear you complain about anything going on in your neighborhood. Your school board trustees are up for election. Your local judges are up for election. Your sheriff candidates. Your are sheriff. Your one. governor. Your lieutenant governor. Your, your city. Half the... A county public administrator. I don't know who's running. I don't even know what they do. I actually do. One of my friends is running for public administrator. His oh. name is Hardy. Uh, and yeah, it rhymes with party. And I've partied with Hardy. He's a really good guy. He's a really nice guy. So uh, if you have anybody in mind for public administrator, that's an, it's a nonpartisan office. So I can say, I personally voted for Hardy Brunel. <laughs> All right, we're um, coming up on a break here, and when we come back, we'll talk about more about what's going on in America with National cannabis. News. National news. And our 420 moment. And our 420 moment. The Von Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 
702-428-0000 to get your Nevada Medical Marijuana card today. Finally, Nevada Medical Marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation toll-free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. All right, this is our We Can Radio 420 moment. We have a 420 moment and uh, celebrity sl- uh, spotlight. Some of our past honorees have been Jack Roberto, Jack Herrera, Whoopi Goldberg, Cheech and Chong, Bob Seeger, William Shakespeare, Maya Angelou, uh, Robert Walker, and Lele Reiko. Okay, so our next nominee is Dr. Stephen Fry. Dr. Fry uh, was a psychiatrist running for governor in Nevada on the Democratic ticket. All right, Dr. Fry was a medical doctor. Um, He works with domestic violence. He's in education. He works in physical and mental health, and he is a medical marijuana advocate. He advocates for medical cannabis because he says it's the safest medication out there and that and that it has never hurt anybody in the history uh, of the plant. So, Dr. Stephen Fry, he's a man before his time. All right. Uh-huh. Now, next up, next up we're going to be talking about national news. There are some ads that ta- target members of Congress who oppose the medical marijuana um, uh, law or the legislative bill that went the through. The bill that made it illegal. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying Thanks to help for you. Thanks for taking over. No worries. Uh, this was a bill that um, voted that they voted on to defund the raids on medical marijuana patients in the U.S. Department of Justice appropriations, I believe. Yes, the appropriations was- measure prohibiting DEA from spending funds to arrest state licensed medical marijuana patients and providers. That's that's the biggie. That was um, actually pushed through by our local representative Dina Titus, and not one of the Nevada people voted against it. So that's congratulations. Right. All, yeah, thank you, Nevada, stepping yes. up. And if you look at all the states where medical marijuana or they even allowed recreational marijuana, you know, those are the states that overwhelmingly approve the defunding of rating the patients and it's about time that our elected officials are hearing our voices on an issue that helps so many people well not only that um americans for safe access is targeting ads against some lawmakers who voted no beginning with uh uh, Representative Andy Harris, he's a Republican, and uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, a Democratic uh, Democrat from Florida. Um, Harris's own state basically is uh, Maryland became the 21st state to legalize marijuana for uh, medical use in April, but so far he's continued his opposition to medical cannabis in his state. A total of 17 Democrats joined 172 Republicans in voting against the amendment. Harris spoke on the House floor last week in opposition to the amendment. He insisted that there are no medical benefits to marijuana and that medical marijuana laws are a step toward legalizing recreational pot. He said it's a camel nose under the tent, and he cited an anti-medical marijuana report just published by the DEA that also claims medical marijuana is just a means to an end. So I guess they're, they're go- the DEA is getting off the attack that it has no medical use, and now it's just say a means to an end. So, you know, at one part, you know, one part of propaganda against the other. Okay, so it doesn't have any medical use. Okay, wait, now they've proven that it has medical use. But no, no, no. This is just a way to open the door just a little bit so that it all comes through and just recreational and and just, you know, demons coming out of the tent. Well, you know, what, whatever they're... You know, if it's a means to an end then fantastic because those are the people that are at end of life that are in hospice care. Sure. That if, is it, if, if it is their means to an end, amen to that. They've, they've suffered enough. 
and and where you may not think it has any medical value. You may not have any education, or you may, you know, be Believe part of the reefer madness. That's what I was about to say. Be part of the reefer madness community. But when you have someone like Sante Gupta, when you have somebody like Doctor Oz come out and, and reverse their position after strong held years and seeing the scientific evaluation, then who are you? And in not only that, this Harris guy, uh-huh. is he representing the people that elected him that, you know, became the 21st legal medical marijuana state? Are you representing your own interests? Well, you know, if, if you want to get down to it, Debbie Wasserman uh, Schultz from Florida, um, they're considering having medical cannabis in Florida this year. So she's not even in touch with her constituents and in touch with the times and what's going on. And and back to what you were saying, Raymond, you're right. You know what? Guess what? If it does nothing more than just make you happy, then what's wrong with that? In a world of Xanax uh, and all sorts of Valium, or is that old fashioned now? No, um, no, no, you no know, that's not old those, fashioned. No, so, what, well, what's wrong with it is that it doesn't make money for the right people. Oh, like so, big pharma and all the lobbyists that are that are funding their campaigns. So if it just makes you feel good, then so what? Xanax makes you feel good. <laughs> uh, B says that the South will rise again for medical marijuana. No, I would doubt it. And it, the sad thing is, is. You asked last week if Obama's legacy will be decriminalizing uh, marijuana. And Obama is a Democrat. And what, only 17 Democrats? Uh, 17 Democrats. And, you know, the thing is, is that um, Ms. Wasserman Schultz, she chairs the Democratic National Committee, but she was the only member, uh, she was not the only member of her party that voted against it, but she was the only member of the Democratic leadership to do so. You know, and for her to join the the 16 other Democrats that voted against this, you know, shame, shame on you. And I hope you don't get reelected in Florida. Sadly, sadly, though, they will reelect her. I mean, you know, that's what we have. People keep voting the same people over and over. Because they know their names. That's all it is. It, that's entrenched politics. And Sandy, or they have the they have the most colorful, bright, you know, election campaign posters on the side of the road. Because a lot of people, that's the only thing that they they study is the poster on the side of the road. You're absolutely right. Like I said earlier, you know, half these people run for elected office here in Clark County, never seen their name once. And you know what? Probably not going to vote for any of them people, anyways. Okay, <laughs> Colorado law sets up medical marijuana banks. We touched on this last week. But Colorado's governor signed into law on uh, Friday. This is from June 7th. Uh, Friday, a measure to create the nation's first state-run marijuana financial co-op, potentially giving newly legalized cannabis vendors access to banking services through the U.S. Federal Reserve. The bill signed by Governor John Hickenlooper permits the creation of so-called cannabis co-ops so basically similar to a credit union without deposit insurance, which will be governed by the state's Financial Services Commission. Wow. So they're getting banks uh, in Colorado that are uh, like like credit unions. So they're they're state run. They don't they're not FDIC insured, probably because that's a federal banking insurance. No, they're just similar <laughs> to credit unions without deposit insurance. That would be the FDIC insurance. Yeah. So and they're going to be governed by the state's financial services commissioner. Okay. So it, it's a good step, and maybe perhaps this would be the framework for other states to move. We forward already have this. banks that will accept. Uh, dispensaries here in Nevada. Not all states have that, though. We, well, I was going to say, we, we have a the the bank on our discussions uh, board for on Meetup. So if you want to see, it says MMJ Banking in the discussion. So you can you can look on the, our meetup.com, Las Vegas Medical Marijuana Meetup, or We Can 702 to find that information in the bank. And it also has a download of an application if you want to apply. Fantastic. Yeah, it looks like we got Dan on the line. We do. Damn. Dan, welcome to the show. Hey. How you guys doing? I'm good. How are you? 
Good, good. Hey, I want to say thanks for giving us all a voice on the radio. That's awesome. Ah, I think I recognize this voice. Is this the Dan who just recently moved? This is Dan who just recently moved. I'm setting up a big grow in California. I kind of wanted to go backwards a little bit on the uh, what the feds just did for us, which is awesome. That's I great. I am now linked, linked with a collective here legally via paperwork as their grower for the collective. And now with the government doing what they've done, they're not going to come after me. So I'm just tickled pink. It's awesome. I'm so happy that you guys are doing good there. Yeah, it's been busy. A lot of, a lot of work setting up a big grow, but it is a lot of fun. And congratulations on your anniversary, you two. That's just awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Daniel. So, yeah, congratulations and uh, keep up the good work. Uh, we're looking forward to coming out there and giving you visiting with you guys. Hopefully we can have those big grows coming out here pretty soon. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I just, I just ran across some interesting news um, about, you remember back in Florida when they were trying to do the uh, drug testing for food t- stamp recipients? Yeah, it failed miserably because they when they they caught only like 2% of the total population that they tested and it ended up costing them way more than they would have saved on that 2%. Yeah, yeah. That, that fiasco. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, the, well, the that. state of Georgia was uh, planning on implementing a program very similar to that. And in Washington, D.C., the federal government has put the state of Georgia on formal notice that it can't make the poor people take drug tests when they apply for food stamps. In April, uh, Governor Nathan Deal signed a law requiring the state to test any food stamp applicants suspected of being on drugs starting in 2016. The U.S. Department of Agriculture told the Georgia Department of Human Services on Tuesday that states can't make up new eligibility standards for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. So drug tests are a no-no. Oh, snap. Yep. He says requiring SNAP applicants and reciprocants (laughs) to pass a drug test in order to receive benefits would constitute an additional... Uh, condition of eligibility and therefore is not allowable under law, regional USA uh, DA administrator Robin Bailey said in the letter. Well, I wow. guess they snapped on snap. Yeah, exactly. so, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so you know, you know, it's not always all bad. You know, sometimes there's people out there that are working for the people. Yeah, but those people that don't have a medical card that are have the money to buy marijuana, cannabis, but don't have other money, and they're not medical patients, yeah, I endorse and support drug testing for that. Well, I endorse drug testing for government officials and elected officials. How about that? Because they're on the dole, too, if you want to think about it. Some of the biggest welfare queens out there Mm. are corporations. How about, you know what, the CEOs of those corporations need to be drug tested if they're on the dole from the government? Fine. If they don't have a prescription, if it's not legal in their state, I'm all for it. Yeah. And we're not going to give them notice either because it only takes like, what, three days to clean up from cocaine. Just saying. Well, you, you also got to understand a lot of these states that don't have medical programs, there's people that are living there that are going to use it because it is medicine. And, you know, regardless of if it's a state law or not, people are going to use the medicine that works for them. So, you know, and the statement that cannabis is a gateway drug is 110% false. Do you know what a gateway drug is? Alcohol, tobacco. Tylenol, Advil. Ritalin. Motrin. Remember Aleve. when you were taking Ritalin when you were a tiny little baby because, you know, you had you were just too active? They called that childhood back when, when I was young. Oh, I, I wasn't one of those pill babies. I actually uh, was a kid. I had my childhood. Well, good for you. You know what? I w- you know, they tried to give me Ritalin, and then my parents put coffee in my bottle, and that worked. <laughs> well, do you know these government officials have nothing to fear if they live in Colorado and Washington because Attorney General Eric Holder has given a green light on Thursday to those two states whose effort to legalize marijuana has been locked in by legal uncertainty for more than nine months. With the announcement, Colorado and Washington and can now proceed with establishing a framework for the taxation and regulation of legal cannabis for adults. Woohoo! It would also it would allow states to implement um it would also allow uh, states to implement medical marijuana laws without federal interference. <laughs> so we have the um, 
they're not going to interfere in Colorado and Washington, and now they're not going to meddle where... They shouldn't. Well, that's good because, you know, we had somebody um, uh, out at our booth this first Friday uh, getting people to sign petitions to legalize cannabis. And I think in the four hours, he got something like 200 signatures. There were people in line to sign. Yeah, we had them uh, signing on Tick Seeger Bloom's uh, ballot initiative for uh, responsible adult use. And, yeah, there was was a line of 10, 15 people all night long that wanted to sign that that initiative. So Your guy holding that sign to sign the petition Mm -hmm. was really awesome. Oh, that was you. Oh, oh. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty cool. We also had Keith Patton out there and um, bringing attention to you, um, his child custody fight and his child custody battle. I think it's a uh, Google patent um, patent versus Burnell or Burnett. Yeah, uh, yeah, he he was on our show. You can you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, We Can Seven Hundred Two, and you can look at the Keith Patton show and you can hear about his whole story. Don't forget that that judge is also up for retainment. Also, so if you've had any experiences with judges that either show favoritism to one side or the other or don't follow the letter of the law. Or bias. You know, it is your responsibility as a citizen in this this community to vote and say, hey, you know, you're supposed to uphold the law. Why are you not following it? Well, you know, I mean, if, if you don't vote, you can't complain. Go out and vote and... Uh, you know, vote these people out of office. How can you, you can speak volumes by just voting these people out. I, I don't want to go ahead and rehash Keith Patton's whole story because people can go through and watch the show on that. But let me just say this. After reading the news stories and seeing what I saw myself, I can only say this. How can one person be a medical patient with a medical card and have a legitimate use to it and be ordered to take a drug test? Then you have somebody who admittedly, through evidence shown, is using it as a recreational user, yet doesn't have to take that drug test. I do. It's baffling. It truly is baffling. And, you know, I mean, I'm fine. I'll take a drug test anytime. I'm like, I, you know, I, I do what I do, and that's all I do, and that's it. And it's, I don't care. It's none of anybody's business. But if I had to take a drug test for, like... Uh, child, you know, child custody or something like that. If I have my card, I don't think that I'd be afraid. Hopefully, I wouldn't have to be afraid. But you know, stuff happens, and you can always vote people out. The thing is, is you're following the law in the state that you're a resident of that you have legitimate claim to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a break coming up, and when we get back, we will talk about more in the local news and beyond. Locally owned and operated TSI, Total Safety Incorporated, has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. We Can 702 is a Nevada cannabis community. We are a 501c3 nonprofit that meets in Southern Nevada. We are a social group that started in Las Vegas for patient support. We've been active in the community for over five years. If you'd like to join us on any of our events or parties, please contact us through Facebook at We Can 702 on Meetup at www.meetup.com forward slash We Can 702. Our website is www.wecan702.org. Be a part of the Nevada Cannabis Reform Revolution. Please join us and donate today. 
You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Welcome Welcome back. back. This is Jennifer Solis and uh, the Nevada Cannabis News. We have Kurt Gukoc on my right and Raymond Fletcher. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we got some new, good local news here. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank everybody who came out and saw us that first Friday this uh, last week. It was really great. Uh, we we're celebrating Hemp History Week. Uh, today is the last day of Hemp History Week, so uh, we'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, if you'd like to call in, our number is 702-731-1230 or 866-820-5528. Call in with those questions. Uh we can uh, just, we'll be having our patients first meeting this Saturday at the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. So any locals out there that are interested in becoming more of our community and learning about the uses of cannabis or, you know, just meeting the community and getting to know people, uh, it's this Saturday at 2 o'clock at Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf on Maryland Parkway. So the patients first meetings are designed for people to learn, learn and meet people in the community. Sure, come out and connect with people in the community who are like-minded. And also, you can exchange numbers and and talk to each other and, you know, do what patients do in the community. We also just put up our summer pool party series. Woohoo! Get away from that heat sometime this summer. Well, this is a a wildly successful summer pool party series because it's in a private venue. And you know what you do in a private venue? <laughs> have a lot of fun. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're going to have we're going to have live music at the at these events, and there's going to be lots of great food. It is bring uh, bring your own food and beverage. Uh, bring bring to share. No glass, please, because it is a pool party, and we don't want we don't want any glass in the pool. But when in, when it's a hundred and some degrees out there, uh, that pool is wonderful, and especially when you're hanging around with a lot of like minded individuals sure and the pool is so big that over 100 people can fit in it without touching but what's the fun of that <laughs> so come on out our summer pool party series is now on the calendar at, at meetup.com yes our first one will be on june 29th from 3 p.m until what seven or eight till eight till eight so from three until eight raymond what do you got down there for news i don't have <laughs> any <laughs> Ravy just trying to hold in the laughing. I am just trying to hold it together right now. Okay, what we have here are states that are likely to take the next step towards legalization. And there's a handful of them. Some of them you would think would already be legalized. Others might surprise you, like uh, Alaska. Alaska, I think, will be the next one. I mean, they're... they're they've been... a Bitty, big, uh, pretty big push on them lately. Too. Well, they had medical cannabis. Uh, they had medical cannabis before what anybody else did, didn't they? And then, it, then they recriminalized it. Um, now they're looking to decriminalize it again, or they're just looking to straight legalize it. It's already decriminalized. Now they're yeah. going to legalize it. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. What, what Beef said. <laughs> All right. What are some other states? We, we have uh, Arizona's on here. They um, they got uh, nearly over a quarter million signatures. They um, and they need to get a few more. It says to get on the ballot for twenty fourteen for just a uh, straight legalization. Yeah. It, okay. It's it's uh, it's a rather expansive. Includes a system of state taxation and regula- regulation. Now, can I ask you guys a question? What do you think about this? Do you think that do you think that Arizona just coming on board with um, medical cannabis and then following so quickly uh, with legal cannabis? Do you think it's too soon for some states like like Washington and Colorado? It was like a time, uh, you know, that the time had come. There, there was but, a space you know, between there, when they did the medical and when they did recreation. Okay, so do you think that more of a space would let them like get the structure up and running, or do you think that just following with legalization after after medical use uh, is, is a good idea? Kurt, you want to go first, or you want me to go? Well, I, I think I think that uh, 
that they're going to see the success in their programs and, of course, want to expand that program. And the next the next step to expansion is full legalization. Uh, the question is, are the people of the state ready for it? And are their programs even ready for it? Because like we saw when they rolled it out, even in Colorado, that they weren't ready and they didn't have the production ready. And what it did is it created an artificial supply and demand, which drove the prices up. Now, they tried to keep it to where the prices didn't go up for the medical patients, but even those went up a little bit. So, Okay. So, Raymond, what do you think? Well, if... if because you're hearing that they want to tax it for health care, education, you know, sure. public safety, things of this nature. If that's truly what you want to use, the revenue that you get from taxing the medical marijuana or even recreation, have your infrastructure for that built up first. Go through your recreational. I mean, go through, go through your medicinal process first before you go through your recreation. Make sure you have everything. I mean, because some of these states that don't even have how they're going to handle the money you know colorado's the only one that has announced oh they have a way to handle the money it's called the general fund or the slush fund but i'm talking about for like the dispensaries and what no he was i think you you were kurt you were talking about what's the money that's coming to the state through all these fees and and through taxes and everything else and raymond you were talking about the owners having a place to Put their money and pay their taxes. The government wants their money. That's all well and good. Then the government needs to help these people have financial institutions set in place so they can keep their money safe and secure. That's true. That's true. So what do you think, Beach? Well, uh, color, uh, Arizona, just speaking of Arizona, it's rather unique in a lot of ways. A lot of it has to do with, one, they're in the West. Okay, they want to be like the rest of the West. Uh, Also, it has a lot of it has to do with stemming the tide of illegal aliens and things and issues that they have in their state with illegal marijuana, the cartel weed coming across the border. Obviously, they don't want any of that. And the uh, the citizens of the state of Arizona actually want marijuana. Okay, medical marijuana. And so they want to stem, stem the tide of, of the illegal problems. And so states like Colorado, New Mexico, uh, Nevada, uh, these are very tough issues for us. And, uh, and so these states are, are changing just like California and the rest of it. And so we're all trying to build a model real quick. And uh, that has to uh, do a lot with the West right now. Even Utah, uh, Texas, Texas is going marijuana. Uh, Florida is going, oh, they're all going to go, and they're all falling. And so uh, sometimes it has a lot to do with other issues such as immigration and crime. Well, I was going to say, you know, if you if you don't want to uh, buy cannabis from Mexico, don't buy it if it looks like compressed brick swag. Yeah, we don't want any of that coming <laughs> over the border either. If it looks like that, just don't buy it. <laughs> I, I, I can remember back in the days of high school, that stuff, all it did was give me a headache. It's nowhere near medical quality. And remember, trees are green, not brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just packed layers of seeds. God, I, I, I hate seeding medication. But we also have uh, California's on here, Oregon's on here. Oregon, interestingly enough, has already decriminalized marijuana and legalized it for medical use. Mm-hmm. And according to a poll taken uh, last month, 57% of likely voters in Oregon, or is it Oregon or Oregon? It's well, if it's the band, it's Oregon. Oregon. Just Oregon. like Nevada, Nevada. Don't say Nevada in front of the <laughs> county commissioners. But um, Oregon, Oregon, whatever, um, they support a proposal to tax and regulate and legalize for recreation. Then you got Maine, which is on top of the marijuana policy projects, list of states. <coughs> um, Massachusetts, Massachusetts is going to be difficult. Because they're a deep blue New England Democratic state. And as we just saw, a number of Democrats in the House did not step up and represent their constituents. It was 17 Democrats. Were they, were, was one of them from... Like, re, re, read it. Did they had 17 join or 17... 17 Democrats joined the 172 yes, Republicans so out of in all... voting against the amendment. And it, and oh, it looked well, like there was this, this lady, what, she was, is she from Maryland? Yes, 
from Maryland, but she was the only one that was that was like the in the Democratic leadership. Yeah, but that's 17 Democrats, so 172 Republicans. So you see, you see where the weight is. I don't care. They still didn't do the Democrat. And not only that, has anybody checked the Democratic Party platform? That's one of the planks in the platform. So how can they go against their party platform? Anyways, um, Montana. Montana has had a checkered history with marijuana laws. Voters had passed an initiative legalizing cannabis for medical use in 2004. But unfortunately, opponents have taken various steps to amend the measure or repeal it. Reform advocates are hopeful that voters will support full legalization. So they really, much like us, we've had 14 years and patients have had no way to access their medication. They mm-hmm. have had... It's my extra bedroom. I go in there and I harvest my plants and, you know, I cure them. The average patient in the valley. Not one everybody of has the, an extra bedroom. One of the 4,000... 996, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Uh, Rhode Island. Rhode Island. I don't know. I think I just want to enjoy enjoy the medical here in Nevada before we go to straight legalization. I know I'm not going to be popular with you know some people that are just on the legalization bandwagon. Um, but, you know... You know, it's just that we haven't had access. Of course, I'm, I'm joking around saying in my extra bedroom and all that stuff. But the truth is, Raymond, you're right. We haven't had safe access to medication for, what, 13 years, 14 years? And, you know, to have the safe access to medication um, is important for a lot of people in Nevada. And I think that more people will be getting their cards. Okay, and it's not like, you know, medical patients can go find their cowboy ganja anywhere. They need to, you know, actually have safe access, you know. And what what, what they're going to end up coming across is somebody taking advantage of them, somebody jacking up the price of them, somebody giving them something that's not medical quality. And it's truly such a shame. Well, I guess that's true, I guess. Um, but, I mean, I just I would like for people to be able to enjoy the dispensaries and the selection and the safe medication and everything like that before a straight legalization hits because I think that then the medication will be pulled away from the patients who truly need it um, to, to supply tourists with legal pot. You know, and I'm glad you said that because uh, at the city council meeting, there was somebody from an illegal delivery service. <laughs> oh, that, that was so hilarious. That was protesting the Senate bill that had already passed. So yeah. either these individuals were, A, ignorant to what was going on, B, just not comprehending, or C, just want to cause a ruckus. I well, know, you know what? The, the ruckus the, is going to be the, the, the Metro and the feds kicking down their door and raiding them. And more and more people have been saying that is... Well, there's like 40 what, people that went up there and told their name and their address and, they, and said, I'm, I'm being a dispensary uh, delivery person. Saying they're not paying taxes. And, and that we would love to pay our taxes. Oh, yeah, you know what? You're going to be paying to get out of jail. And that's what people were talking about is these... And, and I heard a number of people were saying that these illegal dispensaries are about to or have been raided and... That coming between now and the November election, don't be surprised if all the de- delivery services are gone. Well, you know what? We are up to uh, 5,859 active patients here in Nevada. Why don't you become one, too? Well, join us on Weekend702.org, and that's about it for our show. If you'd like to contact us online, we're on Facebook at weekend 702 and Don't meetup- forget to, I'm dot- sorry to cut you. Meetup.org. Meetup.org or meetup.com and vote. Don't forget to go out and vote today. That's right. All right. Good show, Make your voice heard.